All right. Hello, hello, people of the world looking for inspiration on the internet. I am glad you have stumbled across this video. My name is Karma. I am a visual artist, graphic designer, and educator based in Thailand. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while. I'm 36 now, so I've had uh, over a decade of experience of trying to make a living for my work. <laughs> So if you are in position of wanting to pursue your craft or your art or whatever uh, it is that makes you come alive and you're trying to trying to get it out there, do subscribe. I will have um, more information or content about that later on. Um, if you are already subscribed, you may have noticed that I don't post very often. Um, and that's because my attention um, is going in other areas, uh, which you'll see in my presentation today that I've put together. So what I've uh, put together um, is a bunch of slides on my Google Drive about my journey thus far, um, pursuing my art and dream. Um, so I hope you find it relatable uh, and perhaps if not relatable, at least um, entertaining or inspiring. And if not that even, then thank you for dropping by uh, and I wish you peace and love anyways. So without further ado, let me share my screen and get to this uh, presentation that I have. Here we go. This is my website, but I'm not going to get into this part yet. Let's get to my slides. Hit the slideshow button. All right. So my name is Karma, as I've said. Um, and I am a visual artist, graphic designer, and educator. Maybe I can pop this a bit bigger down here. I think that looks cool. There you go. And um, I love to paint. So I'll show a couple of slides of some of the skills I've accumulated. Um, this is my studio uh, in 2017 when I was working on a series of acrylic paintings um, inspired by color theory and abstract surrealism. Um, I'm also in the same studio right now. It's a lot neater, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm glad to have this space. I've also done a lot of graphic design and illustration over the years. Uh, things like um, graphics for textiles, patterns for textile printing, branding design, logos, catalog, print, album covers, um, that kind of thing. And uh, I've also been able to collaborate with some wonderful brands like New Balance, Freytag, Converse, um, just to name a few. I have had experience in printmaking as well. This piece on the right is an etching that I created. And this piece on the left is a woodcut origami installation. Uh, another skill that I accumulate Tid. Uh, I'm so going to make mistakes as I'm giving this presentation because I'm used to talking in front of a live audience. So this is really weird to be talking into a camera. Um, so really, thank you for your patience. Um, but yeah, uh, what else I do? I make uh, street art and murals and large scale paintings as well. Um, I've done some installations. Uh, this uh, was done at a festival here in Thailand in the north. Um, I have been in over 40 exhibitions in the past 10 years, um, which has been awesome, mostly around Southeast Asia, some in Western countries like uh, Portugal, or um, I've had some shows in the States as well. Um, but this was my last solo show. It's been some years uh, since I put on another one, but I've been hella busy. Um, but I hope to do that again soon. Uh, this show in 2018 was definitely a turning point for me, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, then, uh, after that, I started guest lecturing in 2018. Thailand has a big reputation for many things. Um, it's also one of the creative capitals of, uh, I would say, Southeast Asia. There's a lot of art here. There's a lot of universities here that teach um, 
art programs, whether digital or traditional. So I got invited to talk about my work at a university, a local university. And next thing you know, I found myself a job. <laughs> So I've taught courses, courses over the years, um, courses like color theory, digital illustration, innovative design thinking, drawing, design principles. Um, and it's been absolutely fantastic learning from students as much as they learn from me. I grow with them as well. I get to learn about all the cool new things that the cool kids are doing. So I dig that. Um, then I've also had a lot of talks and workshops. Uh, this one on the left was at the Guta Institute in Thailand. It was called Celebrating Women in Arts. So that's the reason why I'm, I'm sharing about my work right now. I just think that there's so much amazing creativity and art going on in Thailand that is underrepresented. Um, this country is famous for other things, beautiful beaches, nightlife, food, but we have a lot of art as well and creativity and innovation. It's also the start capital of this region. Um, it's quite a quite a, an amazing creative place. Um, so yeah, I've done quite a few talks and workshops about all kinds of topics. Right. So that's just to summarize a bit of things I do from painting, printmaking, painting murals, doing graphic design and teaching. Um, how did I get here? Let's talk a bit about my story. I am fourth generation Thai Indian. I don't know if you are trying to pinpoint where I'm from um, by looking at my features or whatever have you, but I I call myself a Thai Indian. Um, basically, did you know that in Bangkok, there is uh, quite a large um, group of Indians living here that have emigrated for almost four or five generations. Um, so my great-grandfather and community emigrated to Thailand as a result of the violence and unrest during the partition period of Pakistan and India. My passport is Thai. I speak Thai as well. I was also born in Singapore, went to university in Australia, and spent some years living in India. Just to add to my identity confusion. This is my granddad, actually, and this is the late king, um, the ninth monarch of Thailand. So I put this slide to just to give context um, of where I'm from. This was my bedroom wall um, as a teenager. So I've always loved art. I've loved to draw. And as you can see on my bedroom wall with my childhood photo, I'm a little bit shy to share this, but here's to trying new things. Um, I was kind of influenced by, while well, living in Singapore, by Chinese culture. Found myself drawing dragons and tigers and yin yangs and flowers and that kind of thing. Um, I also loved batik. This was made out of batik, which is an Indonesian um, way of making textiles. And I loved abstraction as well. I was always making abstract drawings since I was a little girl. Um, so having been born in Singapore and then uh, moving to Thailand as a teenager, um, I've been fortunate enough to um, be exposed to art in school and also seek out books in libraries. And what I came across were artists like Kandinsky, um, Escher, Dali, Georgia O'Keeffe, um, to name a few. So I had an interest in abstraction um, from a very young age. I also like some contemporary Thai artists. This one is by Pratuang M. Jerun, the one on the right bottom of the screen. And he's an he's a incredible color theorist. I have a list of other names that I'm into. Uh, Hilma Af Klint, um, Rob Roberto Mata, Dale Chihuly, who's American, Amrita Shargil, she's Indian. So, and Judy Chicago. So my influences are definitely global. Um, I think because the passport I carry, the place I'm born in, and the and ethnicity I have are all from different countries. So I, I was happy to explore um, artists from different uh, places as well. So these artists were the most accessible to me at a young age because it's what you would find in a library or in an art history book. Um, so that's what I was exploring. But um, as you could 
probably maybe allude to or that I'm alluding to, I had a massive identity confusion. Um, this series of uh, photographs I created when I was 16 years old. And what I was doing was getting objects, um, pouring gasoline on it, and then setting it on fire. So I think I was expressing this confusion that I felt about where I'm from and who I am and where do I belong. Even though I can speak Thai quite fluently, um, I'm still not seen as a local because of the way I look. I have more um, Indian or South Asian features, I guess. Um, and so I, I was expressing that at this age. I was also exploring um, temples in Thailand and um, the old kind of um, capitals of Thailand, like Ayutthaya, and photographing um, photographing uh, ancient Thai architecture and then manip manipulating it in Photoshop. Um, so this is when I was starting to first learn, learn Photoshop in 2004, um, which I was so into at the time. And this is more from that series. Um, you can see that I'm, you know, using these kind of bright, saturated colors and manipulating them in the computer, really. Um, and that led to my first uh, student exhibition in 2005. Um, a professor here uh, suggested um, to put on an exhibition for us students. So I was really... Um, kind of encouraged by that. And uh, at the time I was studying graphic design. My schooling has been interesting, you know. So I, I left high school at 16. And in Thailand, when you leave high school at 16, if you have um, GCSE or O-level grades, you can enter straight into university. So first I went to business school and uh, that was a complete disaster, you know, because uh, I mean, I failed math maybe like four times and it wasn't even a credit course it was a refresher course um but you know coming from an indian uh family um you know the pressure to well or an asian family rather of the pressure to choose a secure um line of study and a job is a lot so i did that at first but um i dropped out after six months and then went to graphic design school for about um, a year. So this was around that time, 16, 17, that I was doing this. Um, and then after a year of graphic design, I, I put a portfolio together. I don't know where to put my face up here, maybe. I put a portfolio together and then uh, applied for a credit transfer to a degree program in Australia at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. And um, I studied something practical, um, considering I loved art. I studied advertising. So I learned like art direction and copywriting. These are the some of the projects that I did. Um, poster on the left was for a chewing gum brand. Um, the single-minded proposition was long-lasting flavor. So I, I photographed um, desks at school and um, or various schools and showed that nobody sticks their gum underneath because the flavor never, never runs out. Ha! You get it? You get it? <laughs> and the one on the right is a discount voucher for Toys R Us that you have to assemble as a puzzle in order to get the voucher. And I made all of this typography myself. I folded Play-Doh and, and photographed it and whatnot. Um, so with those skills, I was able to um, start freelancing pretty early um, I finished my degree by the time I was 19 because I started school early, you know. So um, I was done with university. I was done with my bachelor's. And um, I was freelancing illustration for book covers. I was doing um, branding. I was doing photography for magazines. So I had kind of an eclectic jack-of-all-trades approach to everything. And that's worked out for me, um, which is maybe something I want to talk about on another video, the strength of being a jack of all trades, which uh, maybe isn't as celebrated as much or enough in the university or academic system. Um, but yeah, uh, this is some of the skills I accumulated. I also did um, web website design. I dabbled um, in 2007. Today, putting together a website is really easy. You don't even need to hire a designer or a programmer half the time. Um, there's so much free templates and um, 
kind of user-friendly websites to put things together. But back in the day, you know, you'd have to hire somebody. So, and it, and, and it was, it was good uh, for me at least, you know, so I, I managed to freelance quite a bit during this too. Um, and uh, various other, other gigs I had um, as well. I'll just flip through these. But whilst I was doing all that commercial work, whether it was freelancing for clients or working for a surfing company, I worked for a surfing company for a while named Starboard. Um, I was still drawing and having this kind of exploration of abstraction and my identity as well. You know, so these were some of my sketchbook drawings from 2008 to 2011. And um, yeah. Uh, you can kind of see some of the influences I've had. Um, I love line art um, as well. And uh, then whilst at my corporate job, um, somebody gave me a book. Um, I was sitting at my desk, you know, pumping out graphic design work on a computer like a digital monkey. And I was just like, I don't know whether this is really what I want to do. Then I got handed this book and it was a biography about Amrita Shergill. And she is a Hungarian Indian painter who was prolific around this time. Uh, she lived from 1913 to 1941. And what I found so interesting about her biography is that she was of mixed culture. So I could sort of relate to that having grown up in a few different places. She was also half Sikh. I'm from a Sikh family as well. My father wears a turban. Um, so he had this light bulb moment. I was like, let me quit my corporate job and go and live in India. So I was completely drawn to that idea and I made it happen. So what I was doing was um, looking for a program um, in which I could explore my art. And I landed on this place called Shantini Ketan. It's about two hours from Calcutta. So I quit my corporate job, saved some money, decided to leave the rat race. I was maybe like 23 uh, by this time or 24. Leave the rat, rat race, leave capitalism, um, and just kind of maybe connect with my roots also, or I had this search for identity. Um, so India was kind of calling to me. So in this place, I enrolled in a, in a printmaking course, a really casual printmaking course. So from working on the computer digitally, then I um, uh, was using my hands again, you know, making woodcut prints and etchings on 300 year old printing presses. It was absolutely fascinating. And I met a lot of other young people and artists as well. And I got to experience living simply. Up until this point, I had only lived in urban cities, maybe Singapore, Melbourne, and Bangkok. So I had never lived in a rural setting before. Um, so for these two years in India, I definitely had a grand adventure. And it really inspired me a lot because in India at that time, before uh, yoga and meditation and all these wonderful new age tools um, became popular again after the 1960s, um, there's a resurgence, I think, in this generation of, of all of that. Before it became, you know, kind of ubiquitous, I, I went to look for it um, in India. And over there, I managed to study many healing modalities and um in those healing modalities, um, I, I came to the understanding of transcendentalism and looking for identity beyond the self. And that really influenced a lot of my paintings at the time. This is an acrylic piece. Um, it's 100 by 175 centimeters, acrylic and paint marker on canvas. And I made this in 2014. Um, and in India, I, I learned or I, I learned about Vedanta. I experienced um, meditation retreats. I connected with nature. Um, I I tried all forms of um, meditation, actually. I was super interested in outer body experiences, but induced through meditative practice. Um, so that's, that's what I was um, kind of pursuing at the time. Oh, I hear my, my daughter is home. Um, let me just pause this. 
Okay, I'm back. Where was I? Uh, right, transcendentalism. Um, yeah, so I uh, looked at um, mantras, visualization, sound, um, every type of focus um, or or single single minded focus to reach that point of trans uh, transcendentalism, whether you're using sight, sound, or whatever sense. So I was I was studying a lot at this time and 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 exploring my imagination and seeing how far um, how far I could go in that. Um, I would say my experiences felt quite psychedelic, even though. Um, I was using mostly um, meditation to to reach these states, which I think is much more sustainable in, in the long run. But anyways, I won't go on about too much of that. Um, but yeah, so in that period, I, I explored um, and traveled a lot around India. Um, I started winning art residencies and um, competitions, which uh, funded my travels as well. Um, and I was really amazed. Um, at how much India had to offer artists and uh, that there was a full um, art ecosystem, if I could say that. You had uh, government-funded support for artists, you had galleries, you have art fairs, you have spaces. At that time, when I left, in, left Bangkok in 2011 for Calcutta, I, I um, didn't really see much of a, an art scene here. Thailand is really developed in terms of design. Like there are some incredible um, interior designers, architects, uh, product designers, fashion designers here. So design and uh, visual communication and advertising even is very, very, um, very, very forward. And I find cutting edge as well. But um, the art, the art world here was still underdeveloped. Um, so in India, I was exposed to um, creativity in another way. And artists are really respected, which I you know, had never really encountered before um, art, uh, making something without um, the idea of commerce or, you know, like a designer would. So these are some of my drawings um, along my travels. I was exploring line and the meditative use of line a lot. Um, and in that meditative use of um, exploring surreal landscapes, I was kind of playing with my subconscious and going inward. So I find these drawings very introverted, <laughs> you know, and um, um, I love to explore shape and space, dimension as well, depth. Um, so at first I was doing a lot of black and white work before I, I, I moved into color. Um, so these were some of my black and white drawings uh, from that time. And there's a sense of journeying, um, a sense of journeying and a sense of, um, exploration as well and I really loved pattern and maximalism um, so this was this was all in my sketchbook and uh, this was a canvas piece that I created as well so I'd say that period I had a lot of surreal uh, landscapes going on um, exploring my subconscious mind and I think that's very much influenced by Dali and also um, surrealists um, and where I was in life uh, as well, uh, traveling and diving into the abstract. <laughs> um, this is another one of my ink drawings. Um, so a lot of subconscious symbolism that I wasn't really consciously aware of what it meant, <laughs> but it's it's what came out. So things like crystals and keys and locks and canyons and hidden messages and it's really ambiguous you can read a story into this in so many ways you know there's a feeling of organic um organic elements but at the same time urban elements as well in the city and I also feel there's a sense of complication and turmoil too um and then and then in all of my meditative practices I really managed to find find that that peace and transcendentalism um, through focus, through focusing the mind in whichever which way. Um, I think there are many keys um, and there are many locks. So it's about finding the right key for your lock. And I, I, I went there looking for those keys. <laughs> so some of them worked for me and I was able to focus and um, kind of transcend this kind of confusion I was having and come to a single-minded point of peace, really, and optimism. 
Um, then after that period of two years, all that travel, wonderful friends, exhibitions, art residencies, it was time to come back to Bangkok. Um, and as soon as I hit Bangkok, I noticed that in Chinatown in 2013, there was an independent gallery boom. So this is quite, I think, common in a lot of major cities around the world where um, artists or creatives, they will come to Chinatown because rents are cheap and um, start putting on uh, uh, art spaces and creating projects. So I fell into that and I thought, hey, I really love doing this and I need to paint. I need to express this colorful line and space and dimension and movement, the sense of movement I had in myself. I was wanting to express it all the time. Um, so I thought, hey, I'm going to put my work out. I'm going to see who who likes it. And let's see if I can switch from being a graphic designer who works on on client briefs and is a chameleon to serve the client to then becoming an artist and finding people who would maybe want to support my interests and, and what, what I like to do and, and, and is inspired by that. So that's what I did. Um, I exhibited, exhibited, exhibited. I went on more art residencies. There are so many adventures I can elaborate on, but I think this video will then go on forever. Um, but um, yeah, I painted, I traveled within Thailand. I went on at residencies. I had tons of exhibitions. And then I landed in street art around 2015. So from all those black and white drawings that got translated into printmaking, this that graphic sense I had, and then got moved into acrylic painting with color, um, I then found myself um, with a spray can. And what I really loved about the spray can is it lends itself to line very easily, the same way um, one might draw with a micron pen or an ink pen. One can draw lines with a spray paint can. And I wanted to get out of my studio and experience something new. Like, I don't want to keep repeating myself, you know. So um, I've always been attracted to learning new mediums. So I found found some, some spray paint cans. I met some other street artists in Bangkok and started going out there and practicing. So that's the size of a can in, in this image here um, underneath my signature. So you get a sense of how big this brick wall was. Um, and um, um, it was it was a fascinating time. Uh, well, like I was riding a bicycle around Bangkok with a bag of spray paint and finding abandoned walls to paint on in broad daylight. And this was before um, the government here uh, became a military junta. So the attitude of the cops were super chill. Um, you know, some would even buy me Red Bull when they found me. But after the government changed, I got more beef from the police here <laughs> um, because it is illegal. So by then, um, after running into the police a couple of times, I decided to retire painting on abandoned walls in the city. Um, but by then, people were paying me to do it, you know. So with this new skill, um, suddenly I got new clients. Um, I was painting murals in coffee shops, in restaurants. I was doing murals for interior spaces and hotels. Um and I thought, hey, I accumulated enough practice to be able to do this. Um, and then funnily enough, the same government and its police that were um, really against me painting on the streets or artists painting on the streets illegally um, were funding my projects for museums. So this is a government funded museum in Bangkok called Pipit Banglampu. And... In Pipit Banglampu, um, the Ministry of Finance funded this mural um, of, the, of the Seed of Life. Uh, and I just found that so ironic <laughs> at the time. Um, and uh, these are this is a time lapse of some client work. Um, so I won't play the music, but and I'll skip along just so you get the idea. So this isn't with spray paint. It's with acrylic paint, but um, it was indoors. So I decided to go with acrylic uh, 
to save the smell affecting customers and whatnot. Um, and uh, it's an image of a peacock. Um, if I scroll along here, there you go. Right, so another example of murals. And then um, I had a solo show in 2018, which I think was a lovely turning point for me. So I condensed all my experiences um, of transcendentalism um, through abstraction and color theory in this exhibition. I was exploring from exploring line and shape and form and movement and color. I was going into three dimensionality. So this piece was made out of um, two satellite dishes. Um, this was clay on wood um, with spray paint. So I was finding a way to kind of um, add a 3D element to my to my work. Um, and that led to some awesome brands suddenly asking me to uh, work with them. Um, so I got a great gig with New Balance. Um, and I did some shoe designs for them, uh, Frytag as well, Converse too, um, Vodafone as well, um, and a few other brands, which I've not put on the slide because it's just been so much work. If I put everything on here, y'all are going to be so bored of me. <laughs> so um, I decided just to keep it as short as I can, and it's probably not going to be short. This is just going to be going on forever. Um, yeah, and uh, I did some motion graphics for a local beer brand um, as well. So this is a quintessential Thai brand. Um, and I made some some animated um, images for them using Thai motifs mixed with my abstract art. Um, okay. And uh, if I can just stop this and go next slide, you get the idea. Um, and then, you know, using... Um, um, animation through projection and also um, Zoetropic, um, that app Zoetropic to animate. I was experimenting with um, projections, like digital projections on top of acrylic paintings um, and animating them as well. So this is um, some of those pieces. Um, I was trying to combine like digital and traditional art by this point is what was going on. So how could I animate handmade drawings? How could I um, mix up different mediums? Because up until this point, I had acquired um, skills across digital and traditional art, but I wanted to still like maintain my style. Um, um, and learning like learning new mediums is what like keeps me interested, to be honest, like after you make, okay, the first 50 pieces you make in life are easy, but can you make 100, 200, 300, 400? By the time you're producing a lot of art, um, finding a way to stay interested and keep going is like, it's really key. So for me, the key has always been to like explore new mediums. Um, and um, my current work now, oh, hey, I'm nearing the end. Woohoo, we made it. My current work now, um, well, uh, in 2019, so about five years ago, um, kid. <laughs> and I wanted to explore motherhood. And, you know, by this time, I was kind of like, um, I mean, I had explored a lot. I had lived in a few countries. I had pursued my work. I had managed to make a living off of what I loved. And, um, and I thought it's time to um, give myself to somebody else and kind of serve somebody else. You know, sometimes being an artist, you're like all about you and working alone in the studio. It, it's really lonely. Like, so I like, started to warm to the idea of motherhood even though I was terrified of it before I think a lot of maybe female artists out there could relate with me about maybe losing their sense of self to motherhood or whatnot but I saw it as an opportunity to grow and um, I had my daughter and the creative journey carried on um, it doesn't end <laughs> you know and in fact she inspired me because um, being a mother 
makes you really efficient with your use of time. So every moment I have, I make full use of now. There's there's no procrastination at all. You just get on with it, you know. So that's something motherhood has given me. And also, like, with her energy, her energy brought 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 kind of the teacher out in me. And that's when um, I got called to teaching at universities. It was also around this time. So I feel really blessed um, that, that I made this decision to to become a mother. And she's a big girl now. She's not little like this. She's about four and a half now. Um, and uh, I started making works about um, motherhood. Um, I just finished my master's degree and my thesis was on matrescence which is the developmental stage um, that women go through. Um, it's a psychosocial developmental stage that women go through as they become mothers, um, which I feel is really underrepresented, uh, which I could talk a lot about as well, maybe in another video, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I was I was reflecting on that journey in, in my master's degree. Um, and I made a lot of drawings of her in the womb. And funnily enough, when she was born, she looked exactly like this. So I made these when I were when I was pregnant. <laughs> but this is what she looks like as a baby. It was just it blew my mind. She had a full head of hair and everything. <laughs> so these kinds of works continued. Um, a kind of reflection of growing into motherhood, of leaving a previous identity and growing into a new identity. Um, I guess identity has big, been a big theme in my life, the change of identity, whether it's from a single person to having um, a family or whether it's from where you're from or sexual orientation. You know, identity has been kind of like like a, like a key um, underlying theme of everything that I've been exploring. Um, these are some of my acrylic paintings. This is sort of unfinished, like her hands are not done, but... Some of my acrylic paintings in the studio at that time, which was about a year and a half, two years, um, yeah, it culminated into an exhibition at a really lovely fine art university here in Thailand called Silpakon. That's also where I teach um, and where I completed my master's. This painting on the right here is two meters by two meters. It's a painting of a, an embryo. Um, and yeah. And uh, then these were some digital paintings. So with my daughter, I got interested also in like digital drawing again, um, because an iPad and Procreate is really conducive to parenting. It's easy. It's easy to work on an iPad with a little child running around. <laughs> so I, I, I made quite a few illustrations on my iPad and um, they're great. And these are all available as limited edition prints as well. Um, Aside from the motherhood series, I also created a series called um, Chromatic Creatures. And these are photo surrealistic drawings of um, various insects and animals um, that I photograph with my daughter around, around Thailand. And um, this is a rhino beetle. Um, so I'm kind of playing with 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 surrealism here as well because it looks real it looks like i made this thing but i didn't it's a photograph that i've painted on so it's kind of an illusion as well <laughs> oh it's raining outside it's monsoon season in thailand i don't know if you can hear it but it's suddenly pouring and uh, these were more drawings in in that series um and that led to an nft collection um that i created during covid i am still up um, but I'm not as focused on it now. But during COVID, when all the galleries shut and I couldn't exhibit as much anymore, um, I went on to an app called Clubhouse and then fell into NFT rooms uh, talking to other people and just learned about how to do this. Um, so this was some of the virtual um, galleries that I created. If I can load it up. Let's see. Is it going to load up? Is it going to load up? Oh, there it is. Uh, all right. There you are. So this is like a virtual gallery. And quite a few of these sold on uh, OpenSea, um, which to my amazement, I mean, I was just doing it for fun. So, yeah, I took some like 
photographs and exports of my art and then turn them into NFTs. Some of them have motion, motion as well. Um, then I was making these uh, canvas prints too, um, kind of mandala, mandala designs. And uh, that led to um, me exploring motion graphics. So I'm into that now. What I like about it is that I can mix up all my mediums. Like I have photographs of everything pretty much that I've made in a traditional medium. So I can remix it digitally in kind of like an endless amount of ways, <laughs> which has been fun. <laughs> um, so I'm into After Effects now too, trying to learn that. Um, so this is some of those pieces um, here. This, these are two butterflies. And then with doing these motion graphic pieces, I then found myself with clients for um, digital projections. So then that, you know, diversified my offerings to the world even more. <laughs> um, and that's what I really like about um, exploring different mediums. Um, aside from keeping me interested, um, so this is some motion graphic work I did for a yoga class. And, you know, so I get called to do different events now, too, at restaurants, at um, workshops, at um, with uh, DJ gigs, a little, little bit of VJing, you know, that kind of stuff as well. Um, and then um, through, like, the motion graphic stuff, I got interested in... 360 degree dome projections. So this is a project I did for um, what you might call it, uh, Bangkok Design Week. Uh, Bangkok Design Week is a big event that happens in Bangkok where you have like thousands of designers who get together and put on exhibits around the city. It's hella cool. Um, and so this was the work I created. These are still photographs, but basically this is a 360 degree projection dome. I collaborated with a company um, based in Thailand, a bunch of Russians living up north who, who create these projection domes and they send them off to all kinds of festivals around the world, like Coachella even, um, which is just amazing. And I, I met them on Instagram, you know, uh, such is life. And uh I'll open up a video of of what I made. Maybe uh maybe a social media reel. So I haven't put the music on, but it's fine. Um don't know if you can hear it, but so it it's it's an animated um a piece of video art about the Thai Indian and Thai Chinese communities in Chinatown where this was exhibited. Um, so I had filmed uh, various objects in markets and the architecture as well along the river in Bangkok um, to kind of show the melting pots of these two cultures in the area, which I really relate to um, being Thai Indian myself. Um, so this was a bit about that. Um, and uh, I was really proud of, of, um, of this piece. And we had uh, thousands of vis visitors. So I was really, really pleased with the turnout of this project. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, before I head to my thank you slide, I just want to show you my website as well. So if you've made it this far, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I know I've been talking really fast. Um, I drank some coffee in a teacup. Uh, to be able to do this. Um, it's uncomfortable for me to talk to a camera without a person giving me feedback because then I know if I'm rambling too much or not. So I probably have been, but um, I'm so thankful and grateful that you made it to the end of my presentation. And um, I just want to show you my website. So it's karmasirikoger.com. Now would be the time to hit the subscribe button as well if you enjoyed this so far. Um, so here's a list of things that I do. Uh, so brand collabs, murals, my fine art collection, digital art, digital projections. Um, my sketchbook is up on here as well, which I haven't updated yet. Um, my NFT gallery and uh, my education services as well. You can see here. So I do all kinds of lectures, courses, coaching, and workshops. You can check it out if I suit you. Um, I've accumulated a lot of different skills um, and I have a lot to offer as well. You know, I really enjoy working with people. Um, 
this is the link to my sketchbook on Pinterest. Uh, all of this can be accessed through my website. Um, so you can explore uh, if you're interested in this stuff, uh, what I've been up to. Uh, I also have a Instagram and a Facebook. Uh, so just plugging myself on my own channel. Does that make sense? I don't know. But yeah, uh, my Instagram is at KarmaFly and my Facebook is at Art by Karma. So thank you again so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it if you've made it this far and not clicked away. Sawadika, namaste, satriyakal, and have a very, very wonderful day, everybody. Um, let me exit this. Cool. Right. Oh, I'm still here. Bye-bye. <laughs>